If you've got the Firefly system in your rig and you want to figure out how to upgrade it so that you can control your rig from when you're away from your rig, stick around. I'm going to show you what you need to do, what you need to buy, and how to get it all installed. Okay, so the Firefly system is basically three major components. You have the control panel, which is inside the rig, where you press all your buttons, get things going. And then there is the integration module, which is installed somewhere inside your rig, and that connects to all your systems. And then there is the communication module. By default, the communication module is usually the Mira module, and that's M-I-R-A, and you install an app, and that connects to the system using Bluetooth so that you can control your rig while you're nearby it. The upgrade to get connectivity for when you're away from your rig through the internet is called the Eclipse system and that's just a replacement communication module and you simply swap out the mirror control mo uh, communication module for the Eclipse communication module. So let me show you what you're going to need to provide to Firefly integration when you call them so that they get you the right programmed module for your particular system. All right, so at your control panel, you're going to go to Set, and then Network Diagnostics. And what Firefly is going to ask you is the information under the G12 section, and maybe this section as well. So what I recommend is you just take a photo of this, and then send that along to them. And also, for good measure, hit this G12, send them this as well. And if you really want to be thorough, send them a picture of this screen as well that just shows this. This is kind of redundant to what you'll find elsewhere, but send it along to them so there are no questions. And that'll also tell them what floor plan you're on, which is important. So once you have that, you make a call to Firefly Integration. They'll give you an email address to send to. You send that information to them, and they will do some confirmation, and they get back to you with a cost. Now, the cost, it's not cheap. Mine was $950. Now, the uh, jury's out and it's very subjective if that's actually going to be worth it. Um, it's, one part of it is peace of mind. Um, as far as what the actual cost is, $950 seems a bit steep to me for what the product actually is and what it's doing. But I have an engineering and network background, so I kind of understand that cost. But they are offsetting the engineering cost and, and you know, salespeople getting commission, all that. So maybe, you know, Financially, it's worth it to them, but as a consumer, I'm not quite sure. I'll leave that up to you to decide. Peace of mind, maybe worth 950 bucks so they can see the temperatures and turn on your air conditioners when you're away from your rig. I'd like, I kind of like it because I'm a tech geek guy, um, and, and you know, so I figured I'd do it for nothing else than the experiment, I guess. All right, let me show you some more info. All right, let's take a look in the box, see what Firefly Integration sends you once you order it from them. They send you the communication module. Looks almost identical to the one that we're going to be replacing with the exception that it has this Ethernet port. And then over here, this port is the standard port that you'll see on the other one where it uh, plugs into the control module itself. Now, you don't have to use this Ethernet connection if you don't want to. I typically will because I can run the cable from here up to the switch in the hub easy enough. You could do the same if you get a clear enough route. But if this is going to be in an area where your Wi-Fi signal is strong enough to reach it, then you just use the Wi-Fi and you program that through the control panel. I'll show you how to do that. Before you put this in and install it, what you want to do is take a picture of the front, take a picture in the back. It does have a pin number in the front and a couple of numbers in the back. And rather than having to get those later by going down there, uninstalling it and trying to shine the light on it, uh, just take them in, in advance and um, that'll save that trouble in the future. They also send you a couple of extra cables in this bus expansion module. Now, the reason they send this to you is because in some installations, there's, this isn't already there. One of these is not already there. And there may not be enough ports or there may not be a cable available to you. So they provide these just by default. But in this particular installation, we won't be using them. But it's a smart idea to keep them around if something changes in the future. So that is all there is to it. Uh, let me get to the next step. All right, so I've already located where the module is in this 39 RKFB, but for the benefit of others that may be working on a different rig, let me show you how I identified where the control module is in my rig. So 
I know that in this rig, right up against the opposite wall here is where the display panel is or a control panel. So I came down here and I had taken that off and I noticed that there was an orange cable coming out of the back. So when I came down here, I discovered a couple of orange cables and it's this bright orange cable right here in front of you. There's another one down there that is not it. And obviously you can see that that's going um, up. So that's how I located that. And then I just traced the wire and I found it go up there and then eventually it goes through this conduit and reaches over into the other side compartment of the basement and there it is. So that's the module, if you can see that, that I'm going to be replacing right there. One module, two screws, one cable, and then adjacent to that you see this whole wiring harness and that's where the Firefly system integrates to all of your systems. We're not going to need to touch that at all. What we are going to do though is turn off the power in the rig before we do anything. All right, so before you get started, you want to make sure you shut off your battery and then you want to shut off main power as well. Now that we've got the rig powered down, we can see that the module is powered down as well. And now I will just disconnect the cable from it. As easy as that. Now I'll take the screws out. Oh, one's almost already out, figures. I think I started taking them out before. I'll take that and put it aside. There's, there's the other one and it's out. That's all it took. Now I'll take the cable. Plug the cable back in, only goes one way. It is in, and before I go about screwing it in, I'm going to go and power back up. We'll keep this handy. Nothing's really changed. If something goes bad, we can always just put this right back in. Turn shore power back on. Turn the battery back on. So now that power is back on, we'll take a look and that module now has a green light on it. It's a little difficult to see, let me see. I can move it actually, because I didn't put it in. And there you go, it's got that green light on, so things should be working. Let's go take a look at the control panel. Now that the power is back on, let's check out the control panel, see if it's working. There you go, the light. lights are working. You won't see any changes here, even after putting in the module, other than if we go here, set, and then the mobile app, this has actually changed. So this pin is now the default pin, so you need to make note of that, and also make note of this code here. Because when we fire up the app, we're gonna scan, and it will show us this number, and then we'll have to enter the pin, and then we'll change the pin. So let me show you how to download the app and get that configured and get yourself going. Now that you have everything up and running, it's time to go into either the App Store or your Google Play Store and download the app. It's called Vega Touch Eclipse. This is on the App Store, so yours might be a little bit different if you're on Google. You basically download the app and open it. It'll ask for permission to get to the Bluetooth, and then you'll start the scan and then it will show that code number that I showed you previously on the control panel. You'll put in the default pin, followed by updating it to your own personal pin. And then it'll do a few checks for firmware. It may ask to do the firmware upgrade, so you'll just connect to Wi-Fi and let it do that. You'll select your Wi-Fi SSID, put in your security key, and then it will download the firmware and ask you for your approval to install it. That'll take a few minutes. You want to make sure you don't turn off the unit or do anything with it while it's doing the upgrade. The download and the upgrade will take about five minutes to install, so I'll speed up the video here. Once that's done, the app will open. It'll do the typical finishing up, which 
so to get all the configuration in the current state and then it will be all set and you are ready to go give it a few tests so now when you're away from your rig and outside of your Bluetooth range when you open the app it'll actually show you an option to connect locally or connect remotely and you'll connect remotely it'll give a couple of seconds to sync up and then you'll have full control and visibility into your controls at the rig simple enough so that installation was pretty easy I don't think it took more than a half hour I think probably the longest part of it was installing the app and doing the firmware updates that it prompted you to do so for 950 bucks is it worth it eh, if you're a tech geek like me and you can justify it maybe there is that peace of mind which is subjective you know you'd be able to monitor the temperatures we did try it remotely went out a bit outside of the Bluetooth range and when you fire up the app it asks if you want to connect remotely we did that you could see the temperatures in the rig turned on the air conditioners and that's all instantaneous so as soon as you hit the button things start to work <clears throat> did the lights on and off all kinds of cool now it, it's a one-time charge of 950 bucks they do talk about a potential subscription fee annually or monthly I think the annual they were floating around was like $89 I got no real confirmation of that and there's no fee right now so you know beware of that if that's something you're going to do that might come along at some point um yeah so i'll do some more tech videos you know as we continue on our journey here so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you think somebody else will get some value from this video share it out to them and if you want more content like this please hit the subscribe button and if you have anything specific you're looking for me to cover please put that in the comments below. And if you have any other questions or comments, need help getting this installed, what you need to do, put, put it in the comments below and I'll do my best to help you out. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time. Take care.